guys, welcome back to the BMW Block YouTube channel and welcome to Sweden. We're actually in northern Sweden today, or the Arctic Circle, and the reason for that it's this car. And to learn more about this very special prototype, I have here with me Dr. Jurgen Golden. He's the vice president of the BMW Hydrogen Research Division, and he's gonna tell us all about this car. We'll have a chance to drive the car today and tomorrow, so there is a lot more things coming out. Tell me where we are today and why are we here? We're here in Arjevlak in the north of Sweden for winter testing for this hydrogen vehicle. Okay. It's called the iX5 Hydrogen. Okay. We presented it at the Munich Auto Show last September, and now we're in the final winter testing, making sure that all the functions work also in these extreme cold conditions here. And it's quite cold here today. It I is believe it's cold minus 10, 15 Celsius. Yes. So this is the perfect place to actually test this car. But before we do that, tell me more about the you know BMW's involvement with hydrogen. And you know, I remember going back a few years to another BMW event and testing the 5 Series GT hydrogen. So maybe take me back from there and where we are today with the technology. Yes, uh, BMW, we have been working on hydrogen for many, many years. Before that project that you mentioned, we had the Hydrogen 7 project mm -hmm. out there. Um, so we have a long history with it. Sure. The 5GT was our first generation of fuel cell vehicles, and this now is our second generation of those vehicles. We made a lot of improvements, a lot of power density improvements. You'll see later when we drive the car, it really is a great and fun car to drive now. Okay, so maybe for people that are not very uh, into engineering, maybe let's take it you know, down a little bit and explain how a uh, you know, BMW powered hydrogen car really works. Because there is a misconception that, you know, is it an electric car? Is it a regular car with hydrogen? So maybe just explain the, like, the basics of all of that. Yes, definitely. A hydrogen car actually is an electric car. Okay. The powertrain, the drivetrain, the electric motor is exactly the same as from our iX vehicle that we just brought to the market. Okay. So we're reusing a lot of the drive technology for those vehicles. Understood. The only difference is the energy is stored in the form of hydrogen instead of electricity in okay. a battery. And then we convert this hydrogen in a fuel cell, which is under the hood here, okay. into electric power, and that drives the car. So we okay. basically combine the ability to drive electrically with you know, the great pickup, the smooth ride, mm -hmm. the silent driving, and emission-free driving with the ability to gas up the hydrogen at a gas station in three to four minutes, like we're used to with petrol ca cars today. Okay, so the hydrogen being the lightest element, how do you manage to keep that density inside that tank? It's actually compressed. It's okay. under 700 bar pressure and uh, the tanks are in the middle of the car, so they're in a safe place. And that's basically how the hydrogen is put into the car. In this car, we almost have six kilograms of hydrogen uh, which takes us about 500 kilometers driving range. Okay, so what's the tank made of? Because there is always this question, you know, it's hydrogen safe, you know, how do you protect the hydrogen? What is it made of? The uh, hydrogen tank has a liner in, in, in the inner, mm -hmm. which prevents the hydrogen from going out. And okay. that is reinforced with carbon fiber to give it the strength. Mm -hmm. And then we actually have a, a coating that um, is additional protection uh, in case there's some fire somewhere then um, the whole tank is protected. We also have release valves. Mm -hmm. So in case there is a fire, then the hydrogen is released and nothing happens, no explosion, so on. Understood. All right, so now if I was a BMW customer that maybe I drive electric cars, and what would you tell me, why would I buy a hydrogen car also? What's the advantage over an electric car, like a pure BEV car? We actually see the hydrogen technology as a complement to our battery electric vehicles mm -hmm. and the other powertrains, sure. um, especially for people who need a lot of flexibility, who uh, want to be on the road a lot, who maybe don't have charging at home, because the main difference is you can gas these cars up at a gas station in three to four minutes and you're ready to go again. You don't have to look for electric charging and so on. That's the main difference. The rest gotcha. is really pure electric driving. Understood. So since we're talking about driving along distances, and I know this is still a prototype and there is still maybe ways to go till we see an actual production series car, but what's the range basically on a, on a single fill of hydrogen? Um, on this car, we'll have about 500 kilometers, which okay. is 300 miles. Um, we're trying to get a little bit more in the future, but that's about the range that you can get in the space of a vehicle. Case. 
gotcha. because of the tanks. And all this technology that you packed inside, you know, the electric motors, the, the two tanks, you know, does it add a lot of weight or is it a similar weight compared to, let's say, a BMW X5 uh, plug-in hybrid? It actually has exactly the same weight. Is it as exactly the, the same? Okay. The same model, the production model of the plug-in hybrid. It's a little bit lighter than the battery electric vehicles, actually, okay. gotcha. that get, get the same range. Sure. So, you know, you wouldn't be a BMW if you wouldn't be talking about performance, right? So a lot of customers care about the uh, performance of their BMW. Right. So what's the horsepower output in this car? In this car, we have the fuel cell system, which converts the hydrogen into electric power and then drives the car. We additionally put in a power battery okay. that gives additional boost power. So like a boost, okay. Okay. So so for overtaking. For overtaking, accelerating, and mm -hmm. also regenerating energy when you're braking. The mm -hmm. electric motor produces electric energy and it puts it back into so the you battery. you actually save that. So you save that back. So like in coasting, a battery electric car. And, and, and coasting, coasting and, and then regen braking. Yes. Gotcha. So and the and total, the total power, power then okay. is 374 okay. horsepower. So that's quite and fast, that, actually. And that makes the, co the combination of the two makes, makes the whole power. Gotcha. And then the standard power without the boost? The uh, fuel cell system itself delivers 125 kilowatts. Okay. That is 175 horsepower. And that is kind of the average when you are driving on a highway, you know, German highways, mm -hmm. top speed, or you're hauling a trailer across the Alps or something like that. Then you need that you know, max power, mm -hmm. but for acceleration, we add the battery power of another 150 kilowatts to give it the extra boost and the BMW driving performance yeah, that we you. all love. Okay, so I, I guess the next part for us would be really to get behind the wheel, drive the car a little bit today, a lot more of that tomorrow, and then maybe we'll dive into some other technical details later on, so we will share that with the viewers. But for now, I just wanted to thank you for your time. Thank you for letting me spend some time with these cars. Guys, that's just the intro. Uh, stay tuned. We'll have a lot more footage coming up and driving impressions, and we'll see you soon. Promise, we are inside the new BMW iX5 Hydrogen. This is a prototype car, and as I've mentioned in the intro video, we are near uh, the Arctic Circle, near the BMW testing center also, and I'm getting a ride today in the car. I'm here with uh, Robert Hallas, the project leader for the BMW iX5. Robert's gonna tell us about the driving experience of the car, about some of the tech. Um, the idea here is really to find out if this one feels like a normal BMW. As a customer, if I buy this car, why should I be excited about this one? Does it feel any different when I drive it? No, the first uh, advantage from this car is uh, that you drive like a normal e-drive car uh -huh. because we have an, uh, the e-drive system from our other cars, the sure. normal um, acceleration you, you know from the other BMW e-drive system. Uh -huh. and the combination with the full cell um, system you have the, the big advantage like the, the, the other cars, the gasoline cars that you are refill the system, yep. uh, tank system in three, four, uh, four minutes. When it comes to the tech, tell me a little bit how the components are tied together. This is a rear wheel drive Okay, car. so rear, okay. Um, uh, in the rear we have the normal um, electric machine, you know, from other cars like EX. Or, and uh, when you want to accelerate more or something like that, we have a high voltage battery in the rear. Okay. Uh, it's not an energy system. It's an uh, just a power uh, battery. Power pet battery like 150 uh, kilowatts. Okay. And when you uh, see you, we, we accelerate. Uh -huh. The boost comes from the high voltage battery. Mm -hmm. The full system is the main power system. Sure. So someone might be asking. So how do you? recharge that little battery that's a special development from bmw um, that's a special uh, uh, cell system okay um, the 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 energy inside is only two uh, two kilowatt uh, okay. per hour okay um, because it's a special system which allows us to to make the um, boost when you want to accelerate sure uh, and like a norman e, e uh, car when you go here in the, the B gas or something like that, uh -huh. you see here the recuperation inside the high water battery. So basically, 
the car it's using a uh, brake regeneration and coasting feature yes. similar to the iX3 yeah. to the i4 yeah. the iX if you go into the B mode that's the more aggressive mode right yes. so if you want to get the most regeneration that's the mode that you will be yeah. going in right yeah okay where did you place the two uh, 700 bar uh, tanks yeah the the main the main tank the big tank is here in the tunnel area okay uh, um, to the to the end of the rear seat, uh -huh. uh, it's around about four kilogram uh, hydrogen inside, okay. and the second tank is um, under the rear seat it's under the rear in the bench. back, uh -huh. uh, around about two kilogram okay. uh, hydrogen inside. So in combined, we have around about six kilogram hydrogen inside. Gotcha. Basically, it's got the same space as no. a normal X5, no. so there is no, no shortcomings by no. having a uh, no fuel cell. No rest recreation for the for the customer. Compared to a regular BAF car, to a regular fully electric car, it's really that, you know, when you have a fuel cell, you don't have to worry about losing power as the battery yes. deplates, right? So yes. basically, you have the consistent power. Yes. So there is no reduction, right? So that's yeah. one of the advantages you, of fuel you see cell. You like you know, the, the the heating system the, yeah. and something like that that have no restriction for the for the range. So because there is no impact on the yeah, range, so the yeah. efficiency, it's it's always kind of constant. It's not yeah. affected by weather, by cold temperature yes. or AC or any of yes. that. That's it's another big advantage for this uh, full cell system. Okay, perfect. This is something you don't usually see in a normal BMW, right? Yes. So it's a, it's a prototype and it's quite cool, actually. Even though I might not understand all the data, there is enough that I do. But um, even as a display, this is actually um, very, very cool. So basically, this is a... Um, testing tool that you guys use yes. to get all the data yeah. you analyze the data afterwards and you have to refine it and it's nicely displayed on a yeah. on a tablet yeah. and all of it so i just wanted to kind of show you guys yeah. what we have here this is what it looks like inside a prototype and you will, will be able to see a bunch yeah. of other things that are quite unique for a test car you see very uh, easily that here you have the different components mm -hmm. Here on the, the first is the, the electric machine uh -huh. and there is the high voltage battery okay. and there is the full cell system and you see when you put here like it works when uh -huh. you put on the gas and something like that and you see there is the tank system you see on one overview uh -huh. the whole system from, from the full cell. Uh, Basically, system. so this one tells you really the efficiency yeah. based on everything, like all the data yeah. here. Because I can see when you ramp up the torque here, yeah. all the voltages. Now this is the one pedal feel. Yeah, where the e-machine goes up. Uh -huh. I see, so that's the highest regeneration yeah. right there. So yeah. you can actually see it in real life and then you can see the range yeah. changing also. And you see in one overview the whole system like it works. Very interesting. So when it comes to the BMW iX5 hydrogen project, from what I understand, it's a collaboration in between BMW and Toyota. And this is really not the first time we've you've worked together on the previous yes. generation. The fuel cells made by Toyota and then BMW has their own fuel cell stack. Yeah. And you also apply your software development on top of that, basically. Yes. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this was informative and stay tuned for the next video. All right, so we're back once again. We're inside the new BMW iX5 Hydrogen. We just took a quick ride to the Arctic Circle, something that doesn't happen every day. Now I have Jorgen with me, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about the car and what we've experienced today. So maybe I start with this. It's quite cold today, uh, minus 10, minus 11 Celsius. But the fact that we drove the car and it has the same efficiency, that's one of the main benefits of fuel cells, right? That is correct. Um, in a hydrogen vehicle, we use the extra energy to heat up the car. Um, the uh, fuel cell mm -hmm. has some um, exhaust heat uh -huh. and we use that to heat the interior of the car and so we don't lose any driving distance in the winter. Perfect. So that makes it a viable option to electric cars, which sometimes, you know, tend to have a, you know, lower efficiency in cold weather or extreme weather temperatures, basically. Yeah, but especially in the extreme temperatures in a battery electric car, you have to use some of the energy in the battery to heat the car. But now let's maybe shift gears a little bit and maybe let's talk about the platforms at BMW. Do you call them platforms or architectures? We actually call them architectures okay. um, because we try to make it very flexible. We're a very customer oriented company uh -huh. and we try to give each and every customer exactly the car that 
best suits the individual mobility needs. What's the main driver behind this? Is there, is there something specific in the industry that's driving the hydrogen technology in passenger cars? Well, there are several drivers. For one, the hydrogen now is uh, basically part of the energy transition. Okay. Hydrogen will be used in the energy transition first off to transport renewable energies over long distances mm -hmm. like for example Japan if they want to import the Sun from Australia hydrogen is a very viable energy carrier to do that because you can't simply import electricity over long distances the second function is storing renewable energy as we know the Sun um, and the wind energy mm -hmm. are um, produced when the Sun is shining or yeah. when the wind is blowing right mm -hmm. and not particularly when the energy is needed. Yeah. So hydrogen can also be used, since it's a gas, to store renewable energy over long periods of time, kind of bring the sun from the summer to the winter. Okay. And in that energy transition and the whole energy system, hydrogen will play a role, um, especially in the industry, but also in the transport sector for commercial vehicles, for example. And um, that will drive the development in the automotive sector as, as a whole. Understood. Now, of course, we have to talk about the, you know, the fueling stations and all of that. That's a, that's one of the main obstacles usually in the adoption of either EVs or you know fuel cell EVs, basically. Do you see any initiatives happening globally where you know you can predict that there will be you know fueling stations coming up in different parts of the world or even in Germany? Is there something that you can share with us? Uh, yeah, there's uh, several countries that are building fueling station networks. Um, for example, um, Korea, Japan, okay. Germany, you mentioned, California has uh, quite a few okay. uh, hydrogen gas stations. China is building some. So there are markets where the fueling stations are being built. And sort of within this decade going into the 30s, we think that from the commercial vehicle sector, there will be more and more hydrogen fueling stations as well, which uh, then hopefully can be used um, both for um, commercial vehicles and for passenger cars uh, alike. Um, the beauty of it is, uh, unlike with the diesel technology today, both the fuel, the hydrogen, is the same okay. for all applications. And also the technology is very similar. Okay. So the hydrogen fuel cell technology yeah. can also be used in commercial vehicles. Um, of course, we have a different application here. We have, you know, high dynamics in, yeah. in a BMW, but the basic technology, the fuel cell technology, is the same. Gotcha. Now, since you mentioned trucks, you know, that usually goes with big cars and all of that, do you think it makes more sense to have the fuel cell hydrogen technology in a larger BMW than in a smaller class? Like, do you foresee like cars like the X5, the X7, the 7 Series, they would make a lot more sense to have fuel cells in that because you can use that car for, you know, longer road trips versus having it into a smaller package? Yeah, I think that is the, the best application. That's why we tried out the BMW X5 okay. as a host vehicle right now. Um, the, typically, the, the bigger cars are used for the longer travels, um, you know, travel with a family, go on vacation and things like that. Yeah. So we think that's the, the best application for the hydrogen because, it, you know, we're always coming from the customer side of things and uh, the X5 actually has a lot of customers who travel a lot. Understood. Well, we've been working on hydrogen uh, a lot of years, um, decades actually. It started with the 7 okay. Series. Back then we used a combustion engine mm -hmm. um, that was a dual fuel basically. Mm -hmm. It could burn gasoline and hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, after that project, decided to go with the fuel cell because everything, you know, at that time was going towards electric. Mm -hmm. That was uh, 2010, 2011. Okay, so far back. Um, so we're, we're moving into electric architectures. Mm -hmm. um, at BMW, sustainability has always been on the top of our, of our agenda. And we've very early started working on electric cars um, and also on hydrogen. And then in 2013, we teamed up with Toyota. And uh, it's a very good partnership. And we're developing the technology together. And uh, this is now our second generation of fuel cell vehicles. All right, so I think tomorrow we'll be heading to the BMW testing center. And we'll be doing some actual driving on an ice course right yes so do you think we're gonna get some drifting in and some really yeah. interesting things maybe we'll see <laughs>